<laughs> well, good morning and happy Pentecost. Look at, I, I'm looking out on a sea of red. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. At this time, I invite us all to take a deep breath to breathe in that spirit as we quiet our hearts and let go of everything else. And quieting our cell phones, we begin to listen to our prelude. Well, good morning and welcome to the Church by the Sea. I'm Reverend Rob A. Singer. And I'm Reverend Barbara A. Singer. Wow, Rob, this is where so many people want to be Memorial Day weekend, the beach. And we have this spectacular view from this room. Indeed, we are so blessed that we can worship and watch the waves. And speaking of water, <laughs> today is, of course, Pentecost, when we in the Christian tradition celebrate the presence of God's Spirit in our lives. The Spirit in Scripture is represented by water in baptism and wind and fire when the Holy Spirit appeared to the disciples on Pentecost. And day and today, it is indeed appropriate that we should be looking out on the water. Indeed, viewing the water is always great. And if you're new to our community, we'd like to extend a special welcome. We are delighted that you've joined us this morning. And in honor of Memorial Day, we are enjoying hamburgers and hot dogs for oh, lunch. Oh, it's your favorite, ah, honey. I it know, is your favorite. it's great. <laughs> Let, uh, I, I'm never going to be able to pull them away from the table. Um, <laughs> so if there aren't any hamburgers left for you, I'm sorry. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> let us now stand and join together in our opening hymn, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. Petunia Blaine, and I met Church by the Sea through my daughter Lara Blaine, who enrolled in the church's youth group last year. Every time Lara returned home on Wednesday from meetings, she only has beautiful words for the experience she lives with you, and that I will be eternally grateful for it. Please join us in the call for worship. When the day of Pentecost had come, the Holy Spirit descended. Filled with the Spirit, the disciples spoke in many languages. Les fils et les filles ont prophétisé. Les jeunes avaient des visions et les anciens des rêves. Filled with the Spirit. I cuori sono stati aperti e i doni scoperti. Filled with the Spirit. Maravillados y perplejos, todo se volvió y se vuelve posible. Filled with the Spirit, hope is reignited in our hearts, and faith is restored. Amen. Good morning. I'm Gina Bartra, the Director of Children and Family Programs. This summer, we have two opportunities for church camp. Information is in your programs, as well as my contact information. Or you are welcome to speak with me after the service. There will be early care and aftercare to aid working parents as well. Youth group for senior high and middle school will continue to meet this summer. The schedule of meetings will be on our website, since we will not be meeting every week. Uh, but we will be meeting, that's the great part, uh, and I will be sending it out this Tuesday to parents and students to your emails. At this time, we invite our children to come with myself and our amazing teachers to church school and for the rest of us to exchange a sign of peace with a handshake, hug, or a fist bump.
Bay. Thank you very much. And to find out more about other programs as well as the programs Gina announced, just look in the back of your programs and it tells you a little bit about the things that are coming up as well as you can always check out our website, Facebook, Twitter, all the other options. Let us now be in the spirit of prayer. Gracious God, open our hearts and our minds to your word and to your inspiration. Amen. The scripture reading, the first one, comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same God. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another, knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. So ends the reading. Our second scripture for this morning comes from the book of Acts, it's chapter 2, the familiar story of Pentecost. Let us open our hearts, our minds, our spirits to the word and inspiration of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. 
And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled the entire house where they were. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each one of the disciples. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, our minds, our spirits, may these be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, sometimes, sometimes in life we get stuck. We get stuck. Stuck in a way of thinking, stuck in a way of seeing in our certain perspective. And no matter how hard we try to think our way out, of being stuck, we just can't. We need outside help. Now, to give you an example of this, to show you a little bit about what I mean, I pulled this morning some clues from the Sunday's crossword puzzle, and I thought we'd work on it together. (laughs) It's nice to be able to work on the crossword puzzle while in church. So here we go, our first clue, and sadly, so sadly, it is appropriate for last night's Heat basketball game. (laughs) If you happen to see that, it just happens to be that day. Another word, 13 letters, for a buzzer beater. Anyone? (laughs) Shocking, yes, definitely. What kinds of things are you thinking about? Spectacular. Depends on which side or who you're rooting for. (laughs) Well, here is the correct answer. Screened porch. It's a buzzer beater. Those little pesky flying buzzing types of things. Okay, so you're getting the hang of it, right? So this one ought to be easy. What makes a lasting first impression? A lasting first impression. It is uh, nine, nine letters. So this is interesting. I've learned how to create silence in church. (laughs) I didn't expect that, but now I know. Birthmark. That is how to make a lasting first impression. Now, I could go on, but I can see it's a little frustrating. So I will move along. Solving these puzzlers, these puzzlers, it requires us to think differently to get our mind away from basketball in order to think of bees or mosquitoes. It requires that we change our usual way of seeing things or thinking about things or defining something and reconsider our assumptions. They require imagination. They require inspiration, or we will forever remain stuck in crossword limbo. The same is true in our lives. For so much of life is also puzzling. How can we love our neighbor when our neighbor seems so thoughtless, so selfish, so hurtful? How can we create a world that is more just? 
How can we bring healing into century-old conflicts and mistrust? How can we find or how can we create peace in such unpeaceful times as this? These questions and situations are puzzling. They leave us feeling stuck, unable to answer, unable to move forward, and sometimes they even cause us to lose hold of hope to find the answers we need outside help. We need to be infused with a jolt of imagination, an infusion of inspiration, of strength, of faith, of wisdom or knowledge, one that allows us to see things differently, to do things differently one that empowers us to do that which we think we cannot do and gives us the strength that we don't think we have or to open our hearts that have been too long closed so that we can transcend whatever it is that has us feeling stuck. And that outside help is the Holy Spirit. That infusion is what the Holy Spirit does. It's how it operates. It's why Scripture calls the Holy Spirit the advocate. For example, that first Pentecost day, an infusion of spirit, like a mighty wind, came upon that locked room where the disciples were. It enabled them to do what they think they couldn't do, which was speak in a different language, to overcome their fears, their trepidations, and go out into the streets. Paul also describes the Holy Spirit as the giver of gifts in his letter to the Corinthian church. It is the Spirit, he writes, that gives the gift of wisdom, of knowledge, the gifts of healing, performing miracles, the ability to overcome our many differences of language, culture, race, past experience, so that we can act as one, one body in Christ in order, Paul says, to work for the common good, to overcome our differences, to work for the common good. Good. Knowing all of that, has there been any greater need than now for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit? For we are in this country and all over the globe so desperately divided that we struggle mightily to work for the common good. If an infusion of spirit is what the church in Corinth needed then to overcome their differences, certainly it is also what we need now. How fortuitous then that when we started to design our new church oh so many years ago, <laughs> we designed the very center of that church, the sanctuary, in order to reflect the Holy Spirit. That when we are gathered together, we are reminded, we are invited to be and feel surrounded by the beauty, the power, the presence of God's Spirit. And as you know, there are three most common biblical symbols for the Spirit are water and wind or breath and flame. This trinity of the Spirit is depicted in the stained glass that will be in our new sanctuary. Now is the appropriate time to take out your Spirit-led little pamphlet, if you have it. <laughs> If you unfold it just once, <laughs> just once, 
I mean, you can get ahead of me. That's okay. If the Spirit leads you to do that, okay. If you look at the first six vertical panels, perhaps what you will see is water, like a wave, dynamic, flowing. If you look closer within those first six vertical frames, you will also see there are hints, hints of empty space, of wind, and even a few sparks of flame, but only a few. If you open it up one more fold, there you go, you will see that that water is becoming more infused with greater wind, greater air, greater breath. In the very top of panes seven and eight, you can see clouds, perhaps, the sun coming across the clouds. And those clouds, that spirit is folding into the wave as the water wave becomes a bit more a wisp of wind. And then if you open up a third time, in the last fold, the last three to six vertical planes, you'll see even more elements of wind. It's becoming lighter, less heavy in water, more like the breath of life. And it sparks at the very end into licks of flame, yellow and red. The window as a whole, it begins with creation, with waters with the hovering spirit of wind upon the waters. It culminates with Pentecost, a mighty wind and tongues of flame. This window is the story of, it is the history of, God's creative, life-giving, division-healing spirit. Now the scale that you have in your hand it's tiny because it can fit in your hand, right? Some elements, therefore, may be hard to see, but the actual window that will be in the new sanctuary, all 18 vertical panes in all, they're 12 feet tall and they're 63 feet long. That is an enormous scale. If you're mathematically oriented, you may have occurred to you that that is exactly 42 times bigger than what you have right here. So if you see a little circle, a little piece of fire here, it's 42 times bigger in the actual window. So today, if you feel stuck with something in your life, if you feel unable to move forward, unable to find the answers for the puzzles of your life, unable to see beyond the obstacles that face you, as the disciples were unable to do that very first Pentecost, locked up in that upper room, pray for an infusion of Holy Spirit to come within you. Use this image that you now have of the window as a meditation, a visual meditation. Remember, the Holy Spirit is an empowering spirit, a buoyant, lifting spirit, a fluid, always moving spirit. So imagine yourself floating upon the Spirit. Imagine it lifting you upward beyond whatever it is that has you stuck. Give yourself, your worries, your frustrations over to God's Spirit. Open your heart, open your mind and being. Open them to the gifts of wisdom the gifts of understanding and healing, the gifts of the Spirit. Then, like those disciples on the first Pentecost, go out into the world to share those gifts, unafraid and empowered. Let the Spirit sing through you until 
new life and joy and justice. They roll down like a mighty ever flowing stream of spirit. Amen. soldiers, but we all know the sacrifice all soldiers have given and the ways they have suffered in service. Their families also have suffered for our sake. At this time, I want to invite anyone who has served in the military to stand and those family members of the military who are serving or who have died in service to also stand and be recognized, if there's anyone among us. Okay. Ah. (laughs) 
And Thelma has also served as she's standing. We give thanks to you and for all those that have known people that have been lost in the military as well. Let us give thanks and pray. Swaying in the wind, moving with God's spirit, a lightness fills us, a sense of hope, a belief in the impossible. Feeling the warmth of the flame of the spirit, we are reassured and find comfort. Refreshed by the wind and water and warmth, we can move forward, guided, steady, ready to discover our gifts and what lies ahead, ready to serve and sacrifice for love's sake. As we celebrate Pentecost, we give thanks for the gifts of the spirit, those discovered and those we are still discovering at any point in our lives. God, continue to infuse us with your spirit so we may do your will and work in this world. Today we remember all who have lost their lives in military service on or off the battlefield and for the families who grieve these losses. In silence, we pray. And in our community, we lift up those that are in need of healing. For Rose, Joan Mary and Bob, Amy and Natasha, Jason and Jordan, and all who are struggling. In the silence, we pray and lift up our own concerns. Today, as we celebrate the gifts of the Spirit, we recognize this community has been blessed with a new facility. And we give thanks for the families and friends who have assisted us. And we pray for all those who continue to work on this building. May they be safe. And may we continue to move forward, opening our doors to all reaching beyond the walls of our own confines always to welcome the stranger as Jesus did. In this, we pray. Amen.
Please join me in pray. Señor Dios, por medio de Cristo nos has dado la paz que el mundo no puede dar. Deja que tu espíritu de verdad more con nosotros, para que vivamos en la esperanza, crezcamos en la fe y guardemos tus mandamientos de amor. En el nombre de Jesús oramos. Lord God, through Christ you have given us peace that the world cannot give. Let your spirit of truth abide with us so that we may live in hope, grow in faith, and keep your commandments of love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, when I was in seminary studying in Washington, D.C., I met a bunch of military chaplains. One of the chaplains that I was in a pastoral counseling class with ended up failing the class. And the reason why he failed the class was because of the fact that the president called him, since he was the head chaplain in the United States, and asked him to drop out of a plane with a group of Navy SEALs for a mission that he could never tell us about. It was a very tough professor. <laughs> If you do not know this, military chaplains are actually not allowed to carry weapons. They are pacifists. And so I also worked with a Muslim chaplain at Tufts University. This was a woman who could not actually lead Friday prayers, but she served and was a great support to many individuals in the military. Memorial Day remembers those lost in service in this country, but we all know that so many vets suffer from suicide, addiction, and mental health issues long after they leave the battlefield. Many die after discharge from the burdens that they carry. Well, Holy Joe's Cafe was created to support our troops by supporting the work of chaplains on the battlefields. They offer coffee and drinks and snacks and a place to gather and pray and share so that they can find and have support. The mission committee has supported their efforts for the past few years and the monies that we send go <coughs> to get supplies for these cafes. The last contribution this church gave went to a cafe in Poland, where many troops are currently stationed on the Ukrainian border. We memorialize those lost, but we must also support those living. They have sacrificed for our sake. Let us do the same. The deacons are holding the offering plate, and today's giving will go to support the efforts of Holy Joe's Cafe. Let us now stand or sit, whichever you prefer, in singing our, actually you can sit and sing our closing hymn because it's just that kind of hymn, <laughs> The Spirit of Gentleness.
One of the first Sundays that I was at Church by the Sea, I did the altar arrangement and Yoko brought her beautiful flowers and I put the flame a little too close to the flower <laughs> and luckily Yoko was behind because I didn't notice the altar was on fire. <laughs> um, and so my first Sunday, the spirit was truly moving through the sanctuary and I am always grateful for the beauty that Yoko continues to bless us with. Can you just imagine what her garden looks like? <laughs> Let us pray. As you leave this morning, may the spirit of hope help you to imagine the impossible. May the spirit of love direct your every choice. And may the gentle breeze of God's spirit lift you when you struggle, granting you the grace to move forward. Go now knowing you never journey alone. Amen. Amen. Happy Pentecost. <laughs>